Hey guys, Enter the Stars, and a couple days ago, we had uncovered a news meme about naked people being trapped inside walls, specifically for three days, and then being viewed by someone from the outside through a hole before being dug out. And then yesterday, one of you told me that you had heard this story before in the Bible, Ezekiel chapter Eight. Let's read Ezekiel chapter 8 because this is pretty creepy. But before we do, let's get into some of these headlines about exactly what happened. We're going to compare that to Ezekiel 8 and you'll see the creepy similarities. Here's the latest story. Firefighters rescue man trapped in wall at Syracuse Theater. And when you do a simple Google search about a person being trapped in a wall, you'll see stories like this going back for at least a decade. So this is a new occurrence, a new meme. The person's always naked. They're always mysteriously in a wall. And there's a hole drilled through to view exactly where the person is before they're removed. Now let's get into Ezekiel chapter 8. This is going to blow your mind. We're going to pick this up. In verse 7. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Now we're going to dig into this, char this character here, Jazaniah, because he is a false prophet. Let's continue reading here. Then sa said he unto me, son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, the Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Now, this cult of Tammuz we're going to get into a little bit later in the show today. It's very, very important, so remember that. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun towards the east. Then he said unto me, Hast thou Thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, Yet will I not hear them. So who are these false gods and abominations that God is talking about here? Trapped inside of a wall. Well, as you just saw, God says that they were weeping for Tammuz. Let's get into who this, what this is. Who is Tammuz? Now, 
This is the Wikipedia article for Tammuz. And Tammuz is actually goes by a different name. Also by the name Dumuzid. But we'll just use the word or the name Tammuz from here on out just because it's more familiar. But as you can see here, the two are synonymous. Now, what were they doing with the cult of Tammuz? Well, there was a weeping ritual as well. So this confirms what God was talking about in the book of Ezekiel. What were they doing? Well, the cult back then, according to this source, Ishtar weeped for Tammuz when he was trapped in the underworld, naked. Several clay model molds discovered in Syria reveal that they were all also at least sometimes shaped like naked women. And here again, according to Demizid or Tammuz, these demons were encouraging Inanna to conquer the underworld. And instead, she hands Tammuz over to them. They put Tammuz's feet, hands, and neck in the stocks. They torture him using hot pork pokers. They strip him naked, do evil to him, and cover his face with their with his own garment. So, we have the trapped in a small space, the underworld, locked in stocks, naked, all of it coming forward from the ancient times manifesting in our spiritual reality with these modern stories of naked people being trapped in walls. The underworld. Now, let's go back to the beginning of this article and start back here and see if we can't find other clues about what's going on here. Because I believe that this story of Tammuz was a Christ mockery story. It was a ritual that was being carried out before he was even born. Now, why do I say that? Well, Tammuz, also known as Demuzid, was the shepherd god, just like our god, right? God of shepherds and fertility, just like Jesus. And this whole underworld ritual in which Tammuz was locked in the underworld, and then Inanna rose in his place, was just like the Christ ritual, or the Christ dying and rising in three days, the resurrection. Now, they even say here that there were three goddesses that mourn Tammuz, just like the three days that Jesus was in the tomb. And this weeping occurred during the summer. Now, this was some kind of a fertility ritual in which as the summer crops begin to fade and there was no food left in the summer heat, they would weep for that weeping of Tammuz. And Tammuz is locked in the underworld is what they believe, just like the people locked in the wall. And this is why God revealed Tammuz as the false god inside a hole in the wall. Now, there's a bird aspect to this as well. And Jazaniah, which we saw mentioned in the text there, in Ezekiel, he was the, sh the son of Japan. And according to Wikipedia and the Bible, he was the worshiper of false gods. Well, why was this the case? Well, he believed that God had abandoned the world and was no longer watching them. And so he resorted to the worship of false gods. Now, here is the seal of Jazaniah. And as you can see, there is a rooster on the seal. says, this depiction is consistent with the remains of those birds found at other Israelite Iron Age sites when the rooster was used as a fighting bird. They are also pictured on other seals from the period as symbol of ferocity, such as the one engraved on the late 
7th century BCE red jasper seal inscribed Jehoazaz, son of the king. So there's this bird at the bottom of the seal of this individual that was called out by name. And as you can see, it looks very much like a rooster. It's even got these, uh, these spines or spikes. I guess they call them like talons on, on the feet of the rooster. Well, there's something similar in the cult of Tammuz. Tammuz was actually described as a colorful bird. This bird is actually called a cuckoo bird. And this was the form that Tammuz chose, and it was actually a bird with a broken wing. Now, the story of Tammuz, in my opinion, is a prime example of how the enemy pre-mocked the prophecies of the coming Jesus with false worship. In other words, the enemy was already mocking Jesus before he was even born. Why would he do that? Well, to throw people off the trail. Do you see now how this is why we have to break down this reality and compare it to the Bible before the ultimate truths are revealed? Because if you were just reading Ezekiel 8, it would have very little relevance, wouldn't it? Without the context of these ritual news stories about people being trapped in walls. Now, this goes even deeper because the wiki article about Tammuz mentions that he is also the snake god Ishtaran, which of course sounds like Ishtar. And so I pulled up Ishtaran, and here on the seal that you see here, you can see Ishtaran as a snake wrapped around the world. Over the top of us here, there you see the snake at the very edge of the seal here, going down. Look at this bizarre seal here. This looks like the sun. This looks like possibly the moon. This almost, we've seen this image before too. This, I believe, are the stars spinning on the equator. Only problem is, is in order to see this happening, you have to have time-lapse panoramic photography. In other words, you have to have lost your sense of time in order to see the stars spinning the way that they do. So this is interesting that this the symbolism exists on such a very old stone here. There's some other creatures on the stone. This is a very old stone. So, what else do we have? Well, Inanna, or Ishtar, was said to be the wife of Tammuz. Let's go back to that article here. And their myth is said to mirror the story of Cain and Abel. Let's look that up. It says here, Samuel Noah Kramer compares the myth to the biblical story of Cain and Abel because, because both accounts center around a farmer and a shepherd competing for divine favor. And in both stories, the deity in question ultimately chooses the shepherd. Isn't that interesting? So now you know the truth. It was always the serpent versus the woman, wasn't it? It was always Cain versus Abel, the shepherd versus the farmer, right? Remember, God cursed Cain and said, whatever you try to do, it will not bear fruit. Well, that was a reference to farming, his farming. And God accepted the shepherd, didn't he? Wow. Wow. This was all about the seed line story, going back to the beginning of time. The seed of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. Now, the cult of Tammuz and Inanna was a fertility ritual. Now, there is apparently this text. I'm not going to show you that picture because it's kind of disgusting. But this is the text from the ancient cult. 
My vulva the horn, the boat of heaven, is full of eagerness like the young moon. My untilled land lies fallow. As for me, Inanna, who will plow my V-word? Who will plow my high field? Who will plow my wet ground? As for me, the young woman, who will plow my V-word? Who will station the ox there? Who will plow... So this goes on and on. There's references to milk as well, which of course are bodily fluids. So this is a fertility cult. And the very erotic text that I just showed you is what is it is being referenced here. Now this goes on because according to legend, Inanna escapes from the wall or the underworld. They call it the underworld, but I think it's synonymous with the wall. But Tammuz is trapped in her place. So it almost appears as though this is a ritual to signify the death of the male energy and the rising of the female energy. So, in summary, it appears as though we have all the aspects of the naked person trapped in a wall meme covered in the cult of Tammuz, playing out spiritually and revealing the spirit of lawlessness of the enemy. Anyway, I wanted to cover that for you guys today over the weekend. I promise you that I would. We have a live show on Monday covering some very important topics, more heart issues. We had the guy in space that went with Will um, Bill Shatner, and he died in a small plane crash. Makes you wonder, right? What did he know? Maybe he knew something. Maybe he saw something up there that they didn't want repeated. Be interesting to go into his social media and see if there were any clues about what he was talking about. Also, there's some new information coming out about a particular substance called interleukin-6 that normally is in the body when there's cancer present. So we'll break that down as well on Monday. All right, you guys, have a great rest of your weekend. Take care and be safe.